I have found researching the subject of the Sanna manuscripts extremely interesting, leading to very damaging proofs regarding the alleged immutability and inviability of the Quran. Will you please enlighten us? As our listeners already know, these Muhammadan fantasy assertions are contradicted by the very records of Muhammadan Islam as we have repeatedly shown in our chapters. The Sanna manuscripts actually put the final nail in the coffin of their deception as I shall now demonstrate. Ladies and gentlemen, we might like to think that history is something completely objective that we can simply go out to discover. The ideal situation is when our opinion of what had happened conforms fully to what really did happen. Unfortunately, in reality, we are hampered by several factors such as past information often gives us a partial understanding, or our sources may be biased, mistaken, or misinterpreted, or the depth of our historical knowledge may help or hinder in interpreting the evidence. Most relevant of all is the fact that our preconceptions are hard to shake off and it is easy to read into sources whatever we want to be there. Often, we have a vested interest in a particular conclusion, and this is rarely seen so acutely as in religious beliefs. It simply isn't acceptable to disprove one's own beliefs. Unless we look at the Qur'an allowing that it may be correct, we may as well not bother. Humans have an uncanny ability to prove in their own minds that which they want to be true. There are three main categories of historical sources that should be addressed. The first is manuscript support. This helps us to see if the present-day works accurately reflect their original texts. The second is other written sources. These may take the form of inscriptions or documents that give us insight into the period concerned. The third is archaeological data confirming that a particular town, for example, was in existence at the time claimed or the approximate date of its construction or destruction in battle. We have so far shown in our series, based entirely upon the Muhammadan records themselves, the falsehood of their common assertion that widespread memorization of the Qur'an proves its authenticity. In reality, this proves very little, except that virtually all of today's Muhammadans read the same text. This reveals nothing to us of the actual events of 7th century Arabia. We are informed by the hadiths that Abu Bakr was the first to collate the text of the Qur'an into one codex soon after Muhammad's death. This is said to have been passed on down to Umar, then to Hafsa, daughter of Umar and wife of Muhammad. At the time of Uthman, we are told that the Muslims of Sham and Iraq had divergent recitations of the Qur'an. These differences were so serious that the commander in charge became afraid of their different recitations, so he appealed to Uthman for help. Uthman got the codex from Hafsa and directed that perfect copies be made, then we are told. Uthman sent to every Muslim province one copy of what they had copied and ordered that all the other Quranic materials, whether written in fragmentary manuscripts or whole copies, be burnt. This tells us that there already were variants in the Quran. We shall never know exactly what they were, as the evidence had been deliberately destroyed. Muhammadans invariably make up the unsubstantiated excuse that the differences were simply those of voweling, not the consonantal text. This is their uncorroborated conjecture to close the subject, especially since the earliest manuscripts make it clear that vowels were not included and there was even a lack of the markings to distinguish between different consonants. Therefore, these differences must have been important enough to show up even in a primitive consonantal text. The next question to ask is whether we have any of Uthman's perfect copies. Muhammadans often brazenly declare that there are two. One in the Topkapi Museum in Istanbul, and the second in Tashkent, Uzbekistan. However, most scholars disagree since they date them to the 9th century. Indeed, non-Muslim scholars in general hold that the oldest complete Qur'an is the Ma'il, copy 
in the British Library dated to 790 AD. In 1972, one of the most important finds of Quranic manuscripts was discovered in the ancient Great Mosque of Sana'a, the capital of the Yemen, while the building was being restored after heavy rainfall. They were hidden in the loft in a bundle of old parchment and paper documents. They were nearly thrown away by the builders, but were luckily spotted by Qadi Ismail al-Akwa, then president of the Yemeni Antiquities Authority, who saw their importance and sought international assistance to preserve and examine them. Al-Akwa managed to interest Dr. Gerd R. Puyen, a renowned Islamist at Saarland University, Germany, who was visiting Yemen for research purposes in 1979. He is also a Semitic philologist who specializes in Arabic calligraphy and Quranic paleography. Puin, in turn, persuaded the German government to organize and fund a restoration project. The restoration revealed that some of the parchment pages dated from the 7th and 8th centuries, the crucial first two centuries of Islam, from which very few manuscripts have survived. Dr. Puin asserts that this is not one single work that has survived unchanged through 14 centuries. It includes stories that were written before Muhammad began his ministry and which have subsequently been rewritten. He says they shed new light on the early development of the Quran as a book with a textual history, which contradicts the fundamental Muhammadan belief that it is the unchanging word of Allah. Quinn's conclusions have sparked the usual angry, malicious, and threatening reactions from Orthodox Muhammadans. They have said, I'm not really the scholar to make any remarks on these manuscripts, he said. So controversial are his findings that the Yemeni authorities, typical of Muhammadan reaction in such matters, have denied him further access to the manuscripts. The Sana'a manuscripts are considered to be the oldest surviving copies of the Quran. Moreover, the Sana'a manuscripts are written in a script that originated in the Hijaz, the region of Arabia where Muhammad lived, which makes them not only the oldest to have survived, but among the earliest copies of the Quran ever. Quinn noticed minor textual variations, unconventional ordering of the chapters, surahs, as well as rare styles of orthography. He also noticed that the sheets were reworked, that is, some of the manuscripts had versions written even earlier that had been washed off or erased and then re-scripted. This obviously indicates that there was still considerable textual modification since the time of Osman. They also show significant variations from the text used today. Whole sections are missing and added to with a much later hand. Passages that today read, say, قُلْ, a divine command to Muhammad, are seen to have once been, he said, or they said, indicating a possible attributing of the words of humans to Allah. Over 1,000 variants have been found within the first 83 surahs alone. Findings led Dr. Quinn to assert that the Quran had undergone a textual evolution. In other words, the copy of the Quran that we have today is most certainly not the same as the one believed to have been revealed to Muhammad. This is something that Muhammadans obviously find offensive since they have evolved the idea that they turned into a dogma, which is crucial to their beliefs that the Quran is considered to be the literal word of Allah, unchanging and permanent. The traditional Muhammadan view holds that the Quran was revealed to Muhammad by Allah in segments between 610 and 632 AD, that the revealed verses were recorded on palm leaves and flat stones and in the hearts of men, meaning memorized, and remained in this state during Muhammad's lifetime. In concluding part A of this chapter, I would like to remind our listeners that even the best authority on the subjects of the Quran, Hadith, and their language is deemed incompetent and incapable by the Muhammadan scholars because he reveals the unacceptable facts about the Qur'an. Their negative mindset is the continuance of the Qur'anic instruction not to question its veracity.